What's good? It's your boy Matt. I'm with my partner. I don't even want to call him my partner. My guy, <laughs> Lady Willie. My brother. My brother, we're interviewing Robbie Joe. You. What's good, Robbie, man? What's happening with you, bro? How you I'm, doing? I'm good, man. How's everything, man? Bless can't complain, man. Bless can't complain. Willie, I'm how the, you doing, pimp? I'm the odd boy, oh, bro. I feel like, like the, I'm not part of the Haitian Sensation Club. No, no this is the Oreo not. Club right here. Oh. <laughs> no, and you, you literally in the middle. Damn, bro. <laughs> and you in the middle, bro. Damn, Pause. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big Fact. pause. Fact. Big pause, but you're in the middle. Hey, don't worry. Hey, they got Google Translate these days. So if y'all yes, start sir. going into the uh, y'all, mm -hmm. y y Creole language, I'm going okay. to I'm no, gonna no, Google no. Translate that shit now. No, I just want like when I'm speaking Creole, like do you know like when like uh do the bouncing thing? Yeah, like, they had oh, on, CB on PBS Kids. Hey, yeah, I seen how I put you know the fucking vibes in, in Creole. Yeah, I was like, bro, this kid. That's like, Google yeah, Translate. <laughs> See it. Huh? Say it. Who gonna invite you? Who gonna invite you? There you go. Ah, there you go. There you go. I'm gonna learn to say that shit one day. Robbie, what's good, brother? Man, same one two different day. Chilling right. like a villain, trying to make a me. You know. So before we get started, um, I want to give y'all. A brief history on Robbie, and then oh, I want to tell you, thank you to Robbie. Yeah, okay, let's go. So, um, a brief history on Robbie is Robbie is a I want to say a celebrity introvert. Okay. He is a he's he's a person that you can connect to for anything with everything, but he's not gonna overextend himself. Mm -hmm. he, he's gonna he's gonna talk to you, he's gonna give you what you need, but he's always gonna be in his corner. He's a very good guy. Um, I've known him since high school. So I mean, what we're talking about, 10 years, 15 years plus. Um, just his worth ethic himself is is impeccable. I was just talking to um, intellectual eye, Justy, the other day, Alfred. Mm -hmm. And I was telling him that, you know, you guys are both of my, my favorite camera people because when people have a talent, they they use that talent and they run with that talent and they brag with the talent. But when a person has a talent and they know that they got the talent, but they critique it to just mm -hmm. make it better. Mm -hmm. That's what stands out from them being the greatest. And I think you in particular are like one of the greatest people when it comes to your 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 talent, which is, you know, videography, producing, managing, yeah. directing, that eye. all that, because you pay attention to so much detail. Mm -hmm. And I was watching Nori, how he said, I have so many songs with different producers and this and that. But when I did a song with Dre, you didn't hear one slur. You didn't hear one breathe. Mm -hmm. You didn't even hear a... Like, you didn't hear mm -hmm. nothing. And he said, because you're working with Dre. Mm -hmm. and, I said, and I said, that's what I compare Robbie to. Is like, Robbie's like the Dre of, like, the, the, his craft. And off, off your craft, you're, 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 you're a good dad. You're mm -hmm. a good man. Um, you're raising two boys. You've been raising two boys for a very long time by yourself. Sure. And I applaud that. I want to give you that respect and that love and that honor to, you know, to say that you're one of the few men in this world that have been through trials and tribulations and not only been through it and do better, but you try to lead and show people mm. that, you know, this is what I've been through. This shit sucks. But you try to lead with love and give that 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 down to people where you know I'm gonna pick you up and you're human just like For everybody sure. else you're human you know you have your bad days like everybody else has it but you never let those bad days take you so I want to make sure that everybody knows before this interview started that you a great motherfucker that's what's up man. <laughs> appreciate the intro yeah, man. flowers man. so now appreciate the intro who is Robbie Joe oh man <laughs> let's see in short terms I'm Santa Claus <laughs> got gifts for each and every one of y'all like Rose say um. Me, I, I'm like what you like to call a, a, a origamist. You know, I can conform to anything. I'm a creative director, so I can uh, literally create anything. And I and I appreciate that gift from the Lord, you know what I mean? Because he allows me to be able to walk in any room and not necessarily just control the room, but add mm -hmm. to the room, you know? Um, I'm a person that's just laid back, chill. I just love to make people happy with whatever they got going on, add my little sprinkle to it, you know? I'm just chill, bro. Chill. That's just great. chill. I do have a question, though. Talk to being, me. being a camera, like being into camera, do you watch movies? Like, you see, if I watch a movie, uh -huh. I'm watching it. I'm like, I'm into it. Like, when you watch a movie, are you like, man, like, I would do the lighting different here? Or you'd be like, man, I would like, I would like make it different here. Like, cause I'm, cause you're into camera. You, you analyze. So you're probably not even watching the movie. You're watching mm -hmm. it like, man, I could do it better. Like, well, I try to turn it off sometimes, mm -hmm. but you can't. You can never. So if I'm looking at it script-wise, if the dialogue is right, if I'm looking at the lighting, if I'm looking at the mm -hmm. angles, if I'm looking at the editing, if I'm looking at the sound design, like sometimes I'm looking at the um, 
the sound effects or I'm not sound effects, but the VHS, the VFX, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, the the on screen work because a lot of times there's a lot of different things that go into any on screen production, whether yeah. it's TV, whether it's yeah. animation, whether it's a movie, whether it's a TV show, yeah. whether it's a podcast. So sometimes I look at it like that, but sometimes I just try to turn it off and enjoy the mm-hmm. content just to be a consumer because. Mm-hmm. You do so much of that, you just want to balance it. Yeah. So it depends on what I'm watching exactly. and why I'm watching. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So what do you look it up to? Like, uh, look, was it like what? Um, do you watch like Stan Lathan stuff like that? Like, what do you mean? Like, I guess who do you look up to when it comes to like, I guess movies, movies or or directing production. in general, production? Um, I don't. You don't look at anybody. No, I mean not necessarily like that. I'm inspired by yeah, all. Yeah, of inspired, course. inspired. Yeah. I'm like I'm like Lil Wayne sometimes, where I'm like, if I look at your stuff too much, I adapt your style mm. unconsciously. Mm-hmm. So I just try not to do that. So yeah. I just look at stuff to see, okay, that's what's going on. Okay, that's how they do that. Okay, let me learn a little bit from this. But of course, <laughs> I'm inspired by everybody who comes before me because everybody has something they add to it. But I know I'm one of the kind of people like I absorb it. Yeah, so yeah. if I'm watching too much of yours, somehow it's going to be influenced in mine. I okay. try to not do that so I don't copy nobody's style. Makes sense. But of course, I research people. I'm always just studying what, what needs to be done and how mm-hmm. it's done. Because I don't know everything. So yeah, I'm yeah. always trying to learn something. So as far as anybody in particular, I can't give you a name because I, I study a lot of people. And I take gems from everybody. Mm-hmm. So I would have to go through my bag and, <laughs> oh, this person, mm-hmm. oh, that person. You know what I mean? Robbie fucked up. Me watching movies. Uh oh, here we go. Let me tell you something. Every am I lying? <laughs> Look, <laughs> bro. Ever since I watch how he makes shit, okay, here we go. I call out so much mistakes on movies, yeah. and she gets so mad. We'll be watching a movie. I'll be, like, baby, baby, watch this, watch this. I rewind it. I said, look, you see how he had his hand on his left. But now he has it on the right, yeah. and it was just. Whoosh, whoosh, I was like, "You fucked up <laughs> on that." I said, "Robbie wouldn't have made that mistake." Robbie points that shit out, mm-hmm. so Robbie fucked fucked me up like on movies and shit. And let me let me not go back to like two B and low budget movies. Forget it. Like I, I'm just gonna have a feel and like, respect to those people because right, right, right. there's no there's no hate nothing. I always just say it's like, bro. He, that's why I, going back to how my intro was mm-hmm. like, he pays attention. Yeah. To he Robbie made me get on a weight loss journey. Just because you said your belly's too big on the camera. I wanted to know because <laughs> this I wanna know I wanna know if this is you no. that added this. Here we go. I was watching the intro. <laughs> yes, sir. I was I'm thinking he's gonna go walk and speak into the mic. He just grabs the bandana. Was that your idea? Was that Liddy's idea? Was was that a lot of time that's in the moment stuff that happens? Mm-hmm. Um you're talking about the intro from one of the first seasons yeah. of the other show. Yeah, I don't even know that other show. We're not even gonna give him that. No, no, no. Uh, that, 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 that's how we got here. That's the origin story. So know. I believe I believe Liddy made them. I believe <laughs> I believe on that project, I might have told him to just put it on the microphone and go in mm-hmm. there and grab it. So cause we we were still developing the idea as mm-hmm. we were doing it. A lot of stuff that me and, and Willie been working on has mm-hmm. been like an idea that's tossed out. Hey, let's try it this week. Oh, that didn't work out. Let's try it again next week. Let's add a little something different. So, but that that definitely was a dope intro. That's one of Bro, the dope. Even like, even like looking at the camera, the, the, you guys are looking at. So the So we're gonna talk about the dark scenes of everything that happened. Break it down. Do you know how many times I walked up and down them stairs and he told? And this is what I'm I'm before I'm working out before and it's like fifty. No, it's like it was cold that day. Yeah. But I must have went up and down those. And if you ever been. To mix masters, those stairs are like almost a ninety degree angle. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of stairs, so he's like, "Bro, you 21. gotta slow it down, bro. You gotta lift it up, bro. You listen, you got, you gotta go. For, no, you gotta go. Hey, your feet, your feet. That's but mm-hmm. I, I didn't understand at that time, and I'm right. sweating, mm-hmm. I'm breathing mm-hmm. hard. But then when it came out, I was like, "Oh, Immaculate. this is why." Yeah. He that's, told me that's to production. Do. Like even you do to the car so many different up. takes just to get that fifteen seconds, just to get that five seconds. You'll be amazed. Two what hours really happens. and you just fifteen minutes, fifteen yeah. seconds. Oh no, that was yes. that was like a four hour commercial, four hours? right? What are you talking about? That day we did that intro, it was about four hours because mm-hmm. we had the car too. Remember? Nah, we we might have spent like two hours doing it. Yeah, two hours yeah. for fifteen seconds, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, like like because. Like we spent like two hours filming the whole thing because no, we had no, to get no, different scenes. But like the, the stair part of it was, which, which is his interest into the studio. You know, like we had to film his steps so we can kind mm-hmm. of. We you have what's called um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh my god, I'm blinking right now. It starts with a C. Not contagious. It's called uh, cool shit. No, no, no. It's <laughs> called 
I'm blinking right now. <laughs> I don't have my phone with me, but it starts with C. Oh my God, what is this word? You know it. I don't know it, but it, it's there. Then when you comment below when this when comes starts, out, it starts with C O C E. Yeah, C-N. but basically it means continuity. Basically. Continuity. Okay, yeah, okay that's okay, the word. Okay. I'm, I'm blinking now. It's called continuity. So all the scenes have to make sense. So it, when the viewer watch it, it makes sense what's happening as the cuts are being um, cuts are being yeah. made. So. Again, you know, just being the ventriloquist behind the scene, I already seen everything, and I'm teaching these guys as we're going along, mm-hmm. like, hey, this is why we're doing this. So they're seeing the ideas, but I have to take their ideas and break them down and say, okay, this is how we achieve that, mm-hmm. and then put it together. And then now, boom, once everybody sees it, it's like his touch, my touch, there was other people that were involved. It all comes together to this beautiful masterpiece. So, And he works as a general. Let me tell you, his work is like he comes mm-hmm. off as a general. Like mm-hmm. he, He's going to tell you, like, when... And I re- that's why I respect his craft too, because he's gonna tell you, I'm not doing this unless we do it like this. Mm-hmm. And not any, I'm bragging, I'm boasting. It's, but I know it can be better. It's gonna be better. No, it's not, I know it will be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then when he comes out and he shows you, he'll stop because he'll tell you that and then he'll show you something that's a reference to that. And he'll mm-hmm. be like, look at how they did it. Look, okay, so now we're gonna take this, we're gonna do that. So, Robbie, so. Let, we're, we're too far forward. Let me go let's back. Backward. It up. Yeah, let's yeah, let's back it up, Robbie. Flip it and reverse it. Let's let's start with Jr. Oh wow. Well, okay. Talk to me. Which let's start with know? Jr. Because if you guys didn't know, Robbie was, <laughs> and I said this before, and let's I'll go. say it again, and I'll say it multiple times. Robbie was a very good rapper. I don't know if he still is, mm-hmm. but Robbie was a very good rapper. You can give us a sixteen. Uh, let's see. Um, or maybe like an eight. Maybe I'm kind of rusty only because I haven't practiced that. Because I'm like I said, with me being like an origami, mm-hmm. like I could just conform to anything. In the last few years, I haven't been so much on the music side of things, I've been on you know the production side mm-hmm. of things. I mean, I have records, I have all kind of stuff that's out. I've dropped numerous projects, but no, but don't turn left, don't turn no, 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 left. No, no, no. I, I, I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah. off the head because no, I, I want to know nothing, where, like... where this is this is the intro, I guess. Yeah. And I, I think I asked you this in the past, but JR was the rapper. Mm-hmm. Um, where did the whole just hip hop come from for you? Um, it came from the struggle. You know, we were just young kids with an idea of something to do to kill time. You know, we we weren't the ones that were privileged enough to have after school activities, stuff like that. So, you know, I kind of was like, well, what can I do? So I started doing music in high school, and um, you know, I had some friends that I, I would see like battling in on in the lunchroom and stuff like that. And you had family that was in band, or you were in band. No, nah, I'm the first one. You're the first one. Yeah. So, you know, we like first generation immigrants over here. So out of my family, I'm the I'm the um creative one in that particular spell. Mm-hmm. I mean that particular arena. So right. you know, um it, it really started off like I ain't gonna lie to you guys, like elementary school, like I remember like I stole a um a tape recorder from school. You know, y'all might not know what a tape recorder is because things <laughs> is definitely but I remember I stole Long one from great thing. <laughs> yes, I remember I stole Pause. a tape recorder from school. <laughs> And my old girl used to have these cassettes that she would play, and they would always have, like, you know, just old uh, Haitian music on it, stuff like that. And I remember I, I put one in. That was the first time I recorded myself doing something. I was just like... Oh, so you dubbed over the Haitian tape? Yes. Oh, man, you're going to get so, asshole. No, 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 no. This is, this is, nah, this is old, so she it's She know? Yeah, she of knew. course she knew. Oh, like, she knew I, I did get my butt whooped back then. <laughs> <laughs> if I was legit, but I, that's when I realized, oh, like, I can... Do this. I, like Lil Wayne yeah. said, I'm going in. That was the first time I realized, oh, I'm going in. So right. from then, it started the addiction of trying to figure out how this works, how the sound quality works, how to create. So, man, I was in that realm for a long time trying mm-hmm. to figure out how to be a musician. Mm-hmm. So that's where all of this really started from was my love for the music, how to figure out how to be a musician. So, you know, like I said, we go back to high school where you learn how to write rhymes, you learn how to create beats on um, Fruit of Loops, Reason, all the all the old, um, old programs. And um, so I did all those different things. And then when, um, I think it was after high school, or like towards the end of it, I started making like little music videos and we started doing stuff like for MySpace. I don't know if you guys remember MySpace, but yeah. we were doing little projects and I would do like little videos on MySpace. I would have guys come to my crib and we'll record a little. But don't be humble, you were popping. Say it. I want you to say it. You, 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 your I movement think, was pop. You was doing talent shows and all that. You was on stages locally. I think, I think with me, like there were other people that were doing their thing. And uh-huh. because I was just doing my thing by myself, that's right. why I stood out. So right. it was like I would create the beat. I would record it. I would produce it. I would do the videos for it. I would do the campaign for yeah. it because I didn't have somebody for me. So right. I was like, well, how do they do it? Let me learn how to do that so I can figure out how to do it for myself. Right. And then me still being the person I am, I'm like, whatever I got, I'm here to share with everybody. It's not mm-hmm. for me. Correct. I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to share it with you because I want us all to win because if we all win, I'm good. 
So, you know. And he's been like that since day one since I knew yeah, him. Yeah, for sure. Just so y'all know, stamped it. I want to no, stamp sure. that. I, I, ain't, I ain't greedy. Like, this, <laughs> this don't win. This don't work without everybody's include me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It could be somebody who's the janitor. It could be somebody who's a cashier. It could be somebody who's the door greeter. We need everybody, every of department course. for yep. this to work. You know what I mean? So, so my space starts popping. You get mm-hmm. that going. What's the next thing on JR's mission? Oh, man. The first thing that ever happened was this guy named AJ. Um, AJ found me online, and um, AJ had a little production company back then. And, um, you know, AJ was a, a, a quadriplegic, so he 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 was paralyzed from the neck down. And when AJ um, noticed me, he was like the first one to kind of say, hey, I noticed you got some talent. I want to introduce you to some guys, and we want to figure out some stuff. So that's that's initially how, like, I met Mike Smith and this different people during that time. This was, like, maybe 2007, 2008. Mm-hmm. And this guy, he he has such a great spirit. Like, he just wanted everybody around him to win. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Again, this guy, was he was confined to a bed. His whole house was rigged from him using this voice recorder thing to, to control his right. whole house. It was some shit I've never seen before. But, like... Again, um, is that why you feel like you connected with him because he had kind of like the same spirit you had? No, not necessarily. I just, I just, he was the one who had a vision. I, I didn't see it from a broad perspective. I was just into whatever was working. You know, right. hey, if we gonna make some beats today, if we getting, if we doing songs today, if we doing photo shoots today, I was just, just right at that particular step in the game. I didn't, I didn't see the broad perspective. So when he approached me, he was like, "No, I want you to be the executive director for my company." So. I, Mm. I was like, I don't even know what the hell that means. I'm like, okay, well, I'll be the creative guy. I'll try to figure out. But I didn't know, like, everything. So I'm just like, I'm going to learn as I go. Now, if I get it wrong, it's because I don't know this. I'm learning this, you know. But, you know, so I seen, like, what other people needed. And it, and it allowed me to say, okay, well, this person needs this kind of direction. This person needs that. So you're not necessarily telling people what to do, but you're there to kind of guide these people. Help them a little bit. Right. This person might need a little work on their cadence. This person might need a little, a little work on their breath control, so like crowd control. Or- Yes. Well, so, so was it a record label or what was that? Yeah, yeah. They had their own production company and they were, you know, doing things during that time. And um, he tried to get local talent from the area and, and, and you know, produce them and polish them, you know. Um, but again, him being the guy that was conformed to a bed, there was only so much that he could do. And AJ, he did a lot of great things for a lot of young people during that time. But, you know, once God called him home, you know what I mean? Different things happened. So we kind of all went our separate ways. Yeah. But from there, he was like the first person to let me know, like, I have a talent that the world sees. God didn't know him. He he found me on MySpace. He found me on the internet. Right, right. So from there, you know, you had different people along the way that are kind of scout me out and say, hey, I like what you're doing. Come over here. And I gained some experience here. I gained some experience there. And then, you know, the journey just kind of led to where it's at today. And that, that was like maybe 2008. But matter of fact, before we go there, I got a shout out my dog Valdez. You know, he was a teacher at, at Homestead Senior High School. And I remember... um. Like, I was doing night school and all this kind of stuff to kind of catch up on my classes. And um, I remember, like, 11th grade or 12th grade, he used to have, like, a fitness class. And um, he would let me come in his class and, like, freestyle in front of the whole class because he was, like, a music major himself. So, mm-hmm. you know, he was like, hey, young dude, come do whatever you want to do. You know, we ain't really doing shit in class. So, right. fuck it, let's go ahead. So, hope you don't get in trouble for this. But <laughs> at the end of the day, every every time I had his class, he like, hey, you got a new song you want to try? I would literally go up there and freestyle in front of the whole class. Or I have my little song. I do my little thing. Whatever, and what people whatever. don't know, that's pretty practice that's that's exactly. that's you, you didn't even know it no 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 I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you how that i'm gonna show you how it all works so what v was doing was introducing me to stuff so v was actually the person um v is short for valdez once we kind of got cool we um he invited me to, that's the metallic, meticulousness yeah yeah that don't no, for <laughs> sure listen once <laughs> once he once we once we kind of got going he um invited us to his house it was me and some other group i mean it was a group that we was with at that time i forgot the name that we was in but um, we were, that's when I was actually first recording with him. I was recording with other people here and there, but this was a guy who really knew his stuff about music, right? producing music. So he had a room set up in his house, and we was in there working on records, just down the third, and he was always giving me tips on like making beats or engineering or editing, whatever it came to the music side of the thing. Mm-hmm. But he was the first one that took me to um, my first open mic. He was the first one. He was the person that supported me to do like the Bronco Roundup, which was like the pep rally stuff and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So he was grooming me, and I, I didn't know at the time, but I, I realized like he was the A&R behind the JR. He was the one that was showing mm. me, hey, this is what people are doing. Hey, look into this. Hey, look into that. And I would see what he would be doing for other artists, and I'm like, I'm not gonna be a hater. I'm gonna study what they're doing while he's right. doing that for them and not doing that for me because I'm not developed like that yet. Let me figure out how to do this. Let me figure out how to do that to where it led to him me, taking me to Tucker's. Tucker's was an open uh, open mic spot Definitely. that was hosted by um, Larry Dog and Chaos. Shout damn. out to Larry Dog, and that's how I met. Shout out to Chaos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry yes. Dog, dang. So if Larry Dog, that's my uncle. What? Chaos is like my brother. 
Yeah. So we have a history of from way back then of me coming from Homestead, driving to Opelika, staying there, making sure. Man, it, it goes on and on for days, but we need three hours of video just for that. Right. That's <laughs> that's when I learned the other side of it. Versus, you know, as an artist, you start off in your own world, and we make what's called homeboy music, where it's just me and my homeboys are listening to this. We don't really know what the outside influence right. is. It's just we just making stuff. Not worried cool about the algorithm. We're just making right, right. local shit. Right, right. We call that homeboy music. So going there is when I learned the crowd control. That's where I learned how to make it appealing to others, not just you and yours, because you're seeing people bomb. You're seeing people go up there and rock the stage. You're seeing people come up there and they have the label behind them and they have a whole they have a whole show set up. You're mm-hmm. seeing people come up there and they don't even know how to keep their eyes on people. They're looking down the whole time. They're stiff because they're nervous. You know, you're seeing all of this and I'm seeing chaos take time to groom people behind the scene. I'm seeing Larry Dog have different spots and he's bringing people around. Like Larry Dog. Man. So much date in this video, bro. Yeah. So much date in this yeah, video sure, right now, bro. Yeah, Sorry to cut you off. No, it just it, it gets it gets the chills. No, like no, that's how I, feel. I do want to know. I do want to ask this: like, where did the transition go from rapper to production? Is it with AJ because he he create he made you like the no. A and R type, or where did AJ it come was from? in the beginning? It, it's always been like I said. That's why I say about being an origami because um I'm a creative individual. So it's like from the lack of what we didn't have, I had to figure it out. Because nobody was going to figure it out for me. I necessarily didn't have a team myself. Mm-hmm. I necessarily didn't have nobody behind me. So, man, I could tell you I could take you back to when we had what was called HMHB. And I used to have guys like, uh, y'all probably know him as Ripper on the Beat. Yeah, Ripper on the oh, Beat. Oh, wow. You had, you had Ripper, wow. Used to sleep in my house, you know what I mean? Used to make t-shirts, you know what I mean? Ripper, used to, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, Real humble dude, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the homie, you know what I mean? So I used to have all these guys around me. And then again, as I'm trying to figure out how this goes, like ZK, it's a, it's a bunch of these guys, you know what I mean? So I was just trying to figure out how do I get it for me? And not necessarily mm-hmm. just for me, but once I figured, I'm going to practice on everybody around me until I get it right. Oh, you need a project? Well, let me figure this out because maybe you're not the cameraman for me, but if I can figure out how to be a cameraman for you, I can figure out how to do it for me. Uh-huh, okay. So I was practicing on everybody around me. Hey, what you got going on? You need a photo shoot? Okay, let mm-hmm. me figure it out. Because once I get better with doing it for you, I can in turn do it better for me, whether it's business-wise or whether it's personal. So... The transition happened somewhere along the line, maybe like being broke and trying to figure out how to make this work. Because mm-hmm. I can't have a regular job and do this. Oof, that was man. the biggest problem. I'm like, I'm, I have a regular job because I got you know life expenses, stuff like that. But I'm like, creative-wise, I want to go this way. But financially, I need to be over here. So I'm just yeah. like, the biggest thing is how do I make this work where I can make money off it and sustain myself? So... It took some time. It, it, it wasn't an overnight process, and I definitely failed a lot of times along the way, but more times than I can count, like, I got it right betting on myself. So I'll, I'll never forget, like, um, I think it was Katrina or Irma. No, it was Irma. That's when I was working security. I was working security down That's, there. Uh, 2017? Probably, yeah. So that, I was working security down in the Keys, and they had us, like, on 16-hour blocks because, you know, it was all tore up by, by yeah. Katrina. So I would literally be sitting there 16-hour days just with nothing to do because the, the resort that I was working at was just... Closed down, yeah. Yeah, it, it was... in the gatehouse, that's it. Hang basically. <laughs> so not even to be funny, I would bring my whole setup in there. Wow. Yeah, I would bring my whole, I bring my computer. I mean, the, the tower, the keyboard, the mouse, everything. I bring it. I just be sitting. He's in still there. infamous today to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, if the money's right, he's gonna bring the whole fucking house. I know. No, he's slick. Am I lying? Because I'm trying to figure it out. Again, I don't have a studio to work out of, so I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm figuring things out until I got me a little money. Say, so, you know what? I need to invest in learning mm-hmm. this stuff. So again, that's where Miami Day came into place. I was like, you know, when I was getting the AA, I was like, let me get all this bull crap out the way. Let me get all these classes out the way and then I get to this classes that I yeah. want to learn because again it was a, it was a process of relearning how to get in position to learn mm-hmm. so once I got all once I got the AA I went to the to the bachelor's program that's when I, I took some film classes I took some um uh TV classes I took some production classes and I learned so many other parts because again I'm yeah. learning by myself what I what I believe is yeah. right but now I'm going textbook style and seeing that's why I said when I answered that question like I can't tell you a particular person because I've studied it a certain way. Of course, mm-hmm. I would want to have went to like a place like Full Sail, but I couldn't afford Full Sail. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't capitalize on opportunity when I was supposed to. I had Full to... Sale is Harvard type level of for production. For production. Yeah. So if y'all look at so y'all, people don't know. I, if, I'm just if y'all look at some of y'all greatest movies, some of y'all greatest productions. Uh, a lot of those students and people come from Full Sail. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So Full Sale is like yeah, it's like the Harvard of the production world. So. I just want to explain that for the people no, that are sure, watching that sure. don't know what that's a nice sure, comeback sure. story. But it's like you know the underdog. And he was not, I want to say he was not, he was an underdog, but mm-hmm. it's like, you waited your turn. For sure. And you made, you like, throughout that time, you like, it's like he was a team player. You knew my time's coming. 
you took a back seat. Hey, you need help with this? You need help with that? And then when your time came, it's just like, yo, I'm in the driver's seat and I'm going. And I want to re- I want to capitalize on what you're saying is that from what I said, the beginning from where we're at now, mm-hmm. everything he did, even when it came to school, you know, people like me that couldn't afford school or don't know nothing about school, he explained to me what he learned about school. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you don't understand how valuable that is to other people. You mm-hmm. really don't understand. Like, you you know, but you don't understand how valuable somebody that's paying attention, somebody that's ignorant may not see that as well, valuable. How about we break it down like this? There was a time that I couldn't take any classes because I messed up my financial aid. That means you get that little check, you know, <laughs> blow it off on everything else. The homestead shit. Your grades <laughs> drop, you ain't handling your business, so you go your own way and it don't work out. It's to the point where when I had time to go back to school, I had to make a decision between my kids having their stuff to go back to school or me doing back to school. So I had to, I had to sit myself out and wait. Mm. During those periods, those are dark ages where I'm flustered, I'm trying to figure things out. I'm like, bro, I'm going to figure it out. Wait, so, but dark you know, ages, what was the worst part in your... Well, because we were talking about this. Mm-hmm. What was the, the the most lowest part in your dark age? Because we were talking about businesses in dark ages. Mm-hmm. And if it's too much for you to talk about, no, I respect no, no, it. Like, I want to know what was your lowest part in your dark age where was, that was that moment where it's like, oh, I'm going to quit this shit. And then I want to hear that one. Um, several times along the way, I've had people who I've of uh, Associated with and done business with, and I and and been involved with, invested with, mm-hmm. and believe we were moving forward, and they do a three sixty, mm. and we got I got so much invested, like dang, I got the detach. That's one rebuild. That's two, and and never bring this back up because we're gonna stay solid. Number three. Mm. So there was a lot of that along the way because I I learned that people were befriending me for my gift. And mm. I didn't know how to set my boundaries. I didn't know like how to keep it professional, how to set the expectations. So I, I learned a lot about right, right. Cause I'm a giver. I come from zero. So if I got it, we got it. Exactly. But I had to learn, like people knew that I had boo boo the fool written across my forehead. So I was loose with my finances. If I had it, we all got it. I remember mm. taking my friends on shopping sprees, like again, I would get money. I would always be a hustler. So when I started the photography, we would go to nightclubs and I would go and make like three, four hundred dollars in a night. And just hustling and selling pictures. So, again, in the morning, hey, let's go to the store. We got a show coming up. We buying everything on me. Hey, we eating everything's on me. Hey, whatever we're doing is on me. Just come. I just need y'all to come because I can't do this by myself. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of those shows and stuff that's undocumented because we didn't have a camera crew back then. I was the camera crew. So, when it was time for me to do my stuff, none of these guys, they're not going to do it because I'm supplying the weed. I'm supplying the drink. I'm supplying the travel. I'm supplying the venue. I'm supplying everything. Not, Not the light. Throw shade on anybody. No, no, but no I'm just shade. saying, like, I want to hear the dark parts, right? So, a lot of that comes from just being too vulnerable, not knowing what the boundaries was with myself as a creative. But those things are what taught me to mm. have better conversation and know the art of negotiation. Like, hey, so when I'm talking to you, I'm telling you exactly what I'm telling you. I'm not shortcut. I'm not, hey, I'm letting you know exactly what it, it is because I'm is. a man of my <laughs> word now. So, my word is bond. Yeah, yes, I fail all the time because this is a creative process and nobody has a blueprint for this. So, but I tell people all the time, it's like, the art of negotiation is the key to business. You know, we could talk about a lot of different stuff, right. but if you know how to negotiate, you know how we can both win and benefit from this. Exactly. If you're into just your own personal gain, no, nah, let's fall back. That boy not. You know My I mean? term of homeboy price came from him. <laughs> no, no, for sure. <laughs> no, I, I'll give no you, uh, Matt, we talk about no, it, but it came it. from him. Yeah, I, I'll give you, if you're my dog, I'm going to give you my dog price because I want you to win. Right. If you were outside and we just conducting business, no, that's just business. You know what I mean? So... Excuse me. Um, I try to tell people all the time, like, this game is about relationships. You never know who you're going to bump into, what shoulders you're going to rub. So you want to always be open because you never know who might be building today and established tomorrow. Facts. You don't know who might be on today and may be a failure tomorrow. Facts. But it's still about relationships. So, yeah, the homeboy price is the homeboy price, but this is 2023 and the price is the price. So Yesterday's price. Ain't the day price. You feel me? Robbie, so what was the first... What was the first? Because you know you step now you're in production now you're in uh-huh. video and all that. What was the first production video type set where you said, "Oh wow, I'm doing this now. This this is dope." You know, it had to be something. I think it's the opposite. I think it was the sets that I was on that I wasn't a part of. Okay, so tell me those. So there was a lot of times like me just bouncing around. I always wanted to know like how does it work. You know, what's actually going on? So 
I'll tell you a key a key story. If you guys don't know who, uh, oh my God, I'm blinking on his name. Don't mind, Mr. Drink kicking in. I'm, 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 I'm a little nervous. <laughs> oh, you need mind. another one. That uh, means <laughs> no, no, no. Um, the guy behind the camera is <laughs> yes, nervous. His name, his name is uh, down. I'm blinking on his name. Ah, oh, crap. You blink a lot, bro. No, no, because I'm I'm on the spot, and I, you know, I, um, he's not behind the camera no more. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm good on camera. His name is uh Dre Films. Dre Films. Shout out to Dre Films. If you guys don't know who Dre oh, Films is, the one that worked with MMG. Yes. So okay. um that's mine. Were you, were you around that around that time? So what ended up happening was um I was I was uh a guy that was in contact at one time. He you know he called me and said, Hey, I'm 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 coming up to here to open locker, they're doing a video shoot for such and such. We want to come out and come check it out. So that day when I I went there, it was Dre Films. He was filming the video for somebody else, and that was the first time that I met him. So um you know, we talked and we talked and, you know, I'm just like, I'm hitting up all the time. Like, hey, whatever you got going on, if you need me to be light, man, you need me to do whatever. Mm-hmm. Hey, whatever I could do. Because I'm like, I'm doing little projects myself, but yeah. I know I need to be around people that are greater than me so I can learn what other people are doing. Exactly. So Dre Films is the person who kind of like gave me uh, access to somebody else who really put me in position, like really, really opened doors. And that's when I realized, like, it ain't about what you know sometimes. It's about, it's about who, who you, you know. know. So it was just saying yes to the homie who said, hey, we got this project coming on. Do you want to come along? Yes, I'm going to be there that day. When I went there that day, I'm like, bro, I'm going to go introduce myself. I'm going to go talk to him myself. I'm not being a groupie. I'm gonna, Hey, mm-hmm. you the shit, my nigga. How can I fuck with you? Then the third, that's just, what he told bro, me, bro. bro. You, you he he, he has that? given me yes. that. It's like, bro, you don't, you are Liddy Willy. You go and talk to people. He yes. says, you, go ahead. You go, you, go, you go and talk to people. That's what he yeah. told me. You know how much pride you have to put to the side to do that? Bro? Or you know how scared you have to be to get rejected. So it's either I can not let this happen or mm-hmm. I can take the chance and it go wrong, but I know I did my part. So I'd rather say, well, shit. I know what happens if I don't say right. nothing. Everything he tells me. That's I know what's gonna happen it's if I don't. It's in my do brain. It. So if I at least try to do it and it don't work out in my favor. <laughs> at least shit. I know I tried. That's, That's what he it. told. He's like, Willie, do you want to sit back in your crib and say, "Fuck, I could have did this," or? Fuck, I did it. I tried and it didn't work, but at least I tried. That's that's the type that's of shit he would break down to yeah, us. Man. Yeah, that's some when it comes to this whole space, that's what this whole creative space is about. Like just trying. Like nobody else might believe in you. Nobody else might see your vision. Nobody else might have the finance to support what you got going on. But if you see it and you want to stand it, just go for it. Because sometimes those people who are not on your team are the people that you really need to be worried about because mm-hmm. they are your biggest influence those who doubt you those who count you out those who mm. overlook you. that's the fuel that's the fuel you need that's to say fuel. you know what i know what they think facts versus what i think they don't yeah. gotta believe me mm. but i'm gonna prove them and it's not like nobody hating on you but it's like hey if nobody else i got to prove it to outside myself let me prove it to them yeah exactly mm-hmm. um so, tyler perry what about him <laughs> <laughs> tyler perry <laughs> what you want to know man um, the, the the transition, how he made as as the producer and mm-hmm. uh, all that. How is that? How how do you think? Talk to me. What what, what is the actual question you want me to ask? I want to ask you, like, do you think like that's dope? How he started where he started, and now just having this whole because you know being having he has a fucking production world like universal let's let's actually break down what you're saying he has a a retired military base that he converted to a film studio yes that so tyler perry is a creative individual who again who was an outcast who Mm -hmm. wasn't who was counted against and you guys may notice him from the successful parts um no they made fun of him when he was on stage dressed like a woman yeah yeah you got me yeah you you guys you guys may notice him from some of his successful projects that may be current but you guys, like any other creator or entertainer, you guys don't always see the come up stories, like when mm-hmm. they book venues and nobody shows up, or when you put all into this and nothing happens. Like so, it was a lot of times where it didn't work out before it did, and that's usually what happens to all of us creatives, or whether you're a musician, photographer, mm-hmm. whatever. There's a lot of things that don't work out before they actually do work out. Mm-hmm. But he is one of those who stood the test of time and 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 stayed true to himself, regardless whatever he had. But he also had to figure out. When I get to that roadblock, not necessarily this means that it's over, but it's, I got to figure out another way around this. So Tyler Perry is one of those creatives who started with stage plays and started with booking out venues to have his own project just come to life. And then he continued with it until it became what it came today. 
And the reason why I was asking, what did you, you know, where you was going with this? Because again, Miami Dade was how I actually met Tyler Perry the first time. Right. He had a, he had a. I know Tyler Perry and you are on this, this, this. I know that you talk to me a lot about, mm-hmm. you always reference Tyler yeah. Perry a lot. So that's yeah. why I asked you about Tyler Perry. Because like to me, being a kid from zero, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like to have the opportunity to be in certain rooms, it means a lot. So I remember like Miami Day was always a weird space for me trying to figure it out. But when I, once I made it there and I figured out, um, I was in this film class and it was like, the teacher was telling us about different opportunities to be a part of, to complete the the, the course or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was like, hey, Tyler Perry's going to be a keynote at this um event and on, on, in, at the Fountain Blue. So I was like, shit, I'm going to that motherfucker. I need to see it for myself. Right. Mm-hmm. To see first, like no disrespect, but to see a black man doing things to me, it meant a lot. Because again, there's always, you know, those other races that are doing a lot of different stuff. But to me, being a young kid from the ghetto, it meant a lot to see another black man doing stuff. So mm-hmm. I knew that it could be me. Yes. If I could see or rub shoulders with this person, maybe I'd gain a little bit of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I was supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. I go there, the faculty <laughs> and the staff, they're looking at me like, how did you get yeah, in here? You uh, get I showed up early. I can't do the back door. I snuck up in here and I'm sitting right up front. <laughs> yes. I'm solidified in my spot because I'm trying to figure this out. This right. is my first time seeing this man up close. This is after, back then, when Tyler Perry first came out, we had bootlegs on DVDs of yes. the stage play. This yes. was before it was... Go to the corner store and you get the Medeas. I didn't even go to the corner store. They had Walgreens. No. No, no. no. Back, back in our days. You had the bootleg man yeah. who had everything. Yeah, That's yeah, when yeah. the person's walking well, I'm talking about the you screen. go to the Florida City, the, 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 the blue store there, and they no, had them on the... the right, right, right. The, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. The glass right, right there. Right. And so to kind of... To, to be in a space where this person has been on several different productions, they've been a part of different things, I'm like, let me see what it what is what. Right. So I go there, and he's telling his story about his his rise to fortune, his 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 claim to fame, you know, his highs and his lows. I'm just listening, like, wow. Excuse me. I, I didn't know that whole part because I just see the highlights. I see the part where it all works out. But he literally was like, Did you feel would, better that you could relate to those stories? I felt better knowing that it was real. Mm. It wasn't Hollywood. This right. was a man who failed 10 times before it worked. Because I failed 10 times before that first compliment, mm. before that first recognition, before that thing y'all could say, hey Robbie Joe, that worked out. Yeah. Oh, I felt a hundred times. A thousand. <laughs> yes. And all you creatives, it's going to happen. You might make the dopest song and it sounds great to you and everybody's going to tell you it's trash. Mm-hmm. You might try to spend your campaign money on this, that, and the third and nobody's mm-hmm. feeling your movement. Exactly. It's going to happen as you build it, but people will respect your, deter- your, your endurance, your determination, and your drive, you know? So just keep it going, you know? And he has, he has that, excuse me, he has that Tyler Perry mentality because just so y'all know, I'll give you a, quick fast forward is me and Robbie knew each other, mm-hmm. but I wasn't part of the Robbie Joe come up. I, I We just knew each other from school. I actually yes, had she a, was. Yeah, we was, but I wasn't in, I wasn't rapping and nothing. During, during that, no, no, no. Yeah, no, no, I'm talking about high school. I wasn't so, rapping. Wait, wait, how about this? How about this? Let's switch gears. Wait, will he rap? No, no I no, never rap. No, 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 no. You ain't gears. never gonna hear that. How about we tell the culture what Willie did for me? <laughs> How about we switch that? Because you don't know, and I never probably never told you what you really did for me. I don't know what I did for you, but I can tell you where it started for me and you Hold in the on. beginning. Watch this. Go ahead. See, what y'all don't know is I used to watch Willie. He used to do a show, and him and his brother would get pissy drunk and interview all these people. Oh, we talking before that, Hold but on. yes. Watch yes, I was going to bring that one up, too. I got you. Yeah, I got the, you. The, the brother, <laughs> nah, the brother, the brother Grimsy. Grimsy show. Now, it was entertainment. So basically, you know, they would have a good old time talking shit about whatever Every Friday, they were doing, consistently. And, and it was a good thing. Never so, quit. Watching Willie being the personality, because I understood you have to be an on-air personality. That's mm-hmm. what the radio hosts are. That's what you interviewers are, your podcasters are. Right. You guys are on-air personality. So understanding, like, that's a part of the, the puzzle. So I'm like, okay, how do I get close to this guy and actually learn how to produce and, and mm-hmm. practice with Buddy? Shout out to Spo. Shout out to D.I. Um, so what, what <laughs> happened is, yeah, the homie was like, hey, I'm finna come. Shout out to Spo Bars. The homie was like, hey, I'm come, finna come do an episode with bruh. And um, I want you to come film and do some behind the scenes. So that's when me and him first initially got started. And, um, you know, everything worked out good. And we tried a few things. And we was just, that was the, 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 the baseline for what we got to today. Mm-hmm. While I'm sitting there taking classes at Miami Dade, I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, I'm learning what they're doing on sets. I'm learning what they're doing on production. And I'm like, I need to practice. I need to actually do some hands on and mm-hmm. figure this out. So what Willie allowed me to do was take the textbook and apply it to real life. life yeah, and I didn't allow him. I was hyped when he called me. He's like, "Yo, I want to." And I already knew because I, I seen him on a South to Miami tip. 
he was doing a video for Wait, her. Miami t- oh. Yeah, he was doing yeah. a video for her. Been a lot of production. And he's been a lot of production. He's doing a video whoa, for whoa, her. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where the hell did Joe Mind just go? Where the hell did Joe Mind just go? Hold on. Before all the fans. Yeah, before, no, I, was like, I heard Miami too. I was like, it, it was a music video. She does music as well. I don't know where this guy's here to. <laughs> no, but, but, like, so the, go, going backwards and then going forward. Going backwards, we mm. we knew each other in high school. He had his friends. I had my friends. I've always been that loud, crazy guy out in high school. Yes, he has. It's always been that person. But I had classes with his brother. Um, I had classes with his brother. Yeah, because with my brother? Yes, I had classes with your brother. You okay. Mean? And you know how I knew the Joseph's people? The Joseph's people had the million-dollar smile. For sure. You know, listen, I'm gonna tell you right now. And it's pain I say Joseph's, as in his whole family, Joseph. anybody related to his bloodline, that smile was like a political smile. Like they could kiss babies and sell cars for sure. with that smile. Mm-hmm. So um I knew that's why I said I knew he was a rapper and I knew people that were connected to him as a rapper. I'm like, yo, I, I fuck with his music, blah blah blah. But then when he hit me up, it was moving forward when he came to my crib, because I was doing my shows back then, stood on my crib on live. And Aspen and shout out to Spo, shout out to Di. They were like, "Yo, we're gonna be Robbie to do behind the scenes." At that point, I was like starstruck. I'm like, "Yo, Robbie's coming for real?" And we went and bought a. Me and my brother bought a new fucking outfit. Mind you, we're in a house in, in the homestead. And we're like, "Yo, we, Robbie's coming." Robbie, you heard about Robbie? What he's doing right wow. now? Yeah. So we went and mm-hmm. bought like new outfits. Robbie, I got the pictures still on my phone. Robbie took the pictures. We did that, and then. I was still starstruck. So shout out to 24 Hour Hip Hop. Shout out to 20, Mr. 24 Hour. 24. I'm, do, I'm doing my show with them and then I'm working with them and they're like, yo, we need... It's funny how... It's, it's all God, actually. But it's, we're working. We're like, yo, we need production. Like, there's something we need with production. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I'm not bushing you. He calls me out of nowhere. Well, he DMs me first and we got my number. And then he calls me, yo, I like what you're doing. And like he said with Tyler Perry, it's consistent. It's not, he's like, you're not, you're not stopping. For some mm-hmm. reason, you're still, I seen you at the crib and now you're in the studio. Let's do this. And I was like, all right. And I, I tried to like humble. I was like, all right, like, let's go. But in my, I hung up. I was like, Chris, we got the hottest nigga. Like, he's going to work and he's going to do this. He's going to do that. Like, well, we're going to take this shit to the next level. And sure enough, that we, we did. We did. No, that we, we did. did. It was no cap. Like, we that actually we did. did. And when he came in and he changed that and the, like you said that that intro, but when going back to what he said about um, Larry Dung and and Grind Mode about crowd control, when we shot our last um episode with twenty um our last season with twenty four hour hip hop and we were shooting in front of a live audience, he, that's the first thing he told me. He's like, bro, you done what you done. You do what you do. It's time to take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. You have to understand that now. You have to control the crowd. Mm-hmm. He says, you're already good at what you do. And I'm thinking, yeah, this shit is easy. He had to do it first. He mm-hmm. came in, got on the mic. Well, mm-hmm. we have a fold out building. He's like, this is Robbie Joe. This is the Liddy show. I, 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 I want to sit down. I want to, all right, let me sit down. Let, let Robbie do the show for the rest of the time. Mm-hmm. So, like, everything he said, it was, it was a learning process, but it worked. And manifested even when I was with my mixtapes in the last episode or the biggest episode I did was with Jim Jones. I thought of Robbie. I'm like, Rob, because I always, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was nervous. I'm mm-hmm. like, this is, Jim, this is Jim Jones. This is but Jim then Jones. I, yeah. But then I, and then I hit the Robbie. I'm like, bro, but it's like, this is what you do. This is what you do. You mm-hmm. are good at what you do. Do what you do. Don't let the, because he always told me, him and Chris, shout out to 24, Mr. 24. 24. Don't get starstruck. This is you. You're good at what you do. You're going to be all right. And, you know, that that's just, like I said, it, he, you, what you learn is what I'm trying to say is what you learn is what you always gave as well. It wasn't sure. something that you learned. And, and you said it. You said, like, what you, people that you idolized or seen or did whatever they did, it's because mm-hmm. they gave out, mm-hmm. like Larry Dog, people like mm-hmm. that, they was giving you the knowledge and you did it. You, you, you're you not the type of dude that stopped that rolling ball of when you learned something, you gave it out. You always did that. And sitting here today at Culture Connoisseurs, you're still here yes, rocking with us. If they didn't know, this Culture Connoisseurs, now you know. <laughs> Robbie's behind the scenes. Yes, we, we would not be CC without Robbie. Oh, right yeah, now, that's right. I'm the newest member on the team. <laughs> nah, yeah. we nah, you, you, you're there on you're the there, team, Robbie. Trust me. Craziest date you ever had? Date or date? We went left. Date. We went left real quick. EBG, you EBG? Are you EBG? 
Eat a booty game? <laughs> <laughs> These niggas is wild. <laughs> you see, I finally got somebody that's riding the boat with no, me. No, no, no. I know what you mean. No, I mean, of, of course, as men, like I said, we 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 want to please our our, our woman. Well, let's go to the mean? first so, question and the second question. So, no, no. Cra- craziest date. I'm I'm trying to think because I, I don't I don't have some crazy like wow. I don't I don't know it was gonna go to this level like she was surprised me do A, B, and C, and D to vice versa like. <laughs> Yo, I didn't know you had such and such situation, and now because I'm catering to you, I got a flip buddy. Like, I done had some wild stuff happen because... Like that? Yeah, because again, I'm an origami, so whatever I'm into, I put my all into. So I done went to 10 with some some women, and, <laughs> and you know, whoever they might have been dealing with, it outshined their situation, and now me and Buddy got a situation, right. or vice versa, where she done stepped out on her whole family, and she betting it all on me, and we in a whole nother state doing the hokey pokey and it's like all kind of shit be happening. That's that's not it's gonna not go my, on Miami tip, no? <laughs> <laughs> no mail out the next time. <laughs> I really want to know how that music video went though. It was pretty no, dope. No, no, no. So 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 shout out to the homie Lil Zoe. That's the homie. Um if y'all don't know, check out Lil Zoe. Lil Zoe had did a project with her and somebody else was shooting the video. Mm-hmm. But I ended up pulling up just to do some behind the scenes because, again, mm-hmm. I'm trying to see what's what. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that's my homie. He doing his own thing. So he called me and said, hey, we shooting a uh, music video with Miami Tip. Come through. So, you know, I came out there to kind of see, you know, what they were doing, you know, because I was doing my own thing. And um, I'm like, I'm still trying to learn what other people are doing so I could learn what, what mm-hmm. it is that's going on. So, you know, they were doing their own project. I literally just put up some do some behind the scenes. So that's where I also learned like the key of just giving away your service sometimes. Cause mm-hmm. they were they had their own stuff going on, but I'm back there doing the behind the scenes. So I'm chopping up uh, my own stuff, making my own reels, doing my own edit just to say, hey, this is what I do. Whether y'all use it or not, I'm still, I'm still here. Mm-hmm. I'm learning like how to really do this stuff. You know what I mean? So they did their own thing. They they I forgot the name of the actual song, but um she dropped it or whatnot. This was a couple of years ago. They shot it down there in, in Homestead at the Motorsports Complex or in the area by the Motorsports Complex. And my dog had the drop top, Haiti Vert. And, uh, you know, they were shooting scenes on it. Shout out to my dog, La Jean Dirt. You know what I mean? He's in that project as well, too. And, um, you know, they that was their music video. I just pulled up to do some behind the scenes, support the homie, you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm not too big to be the towel boy. I'm not too big to be the water boy. I'm yeah, not too big to do nothing. To be like and that. that's why I'm Yo, good, regardless, because I'm like, nah, I... You know your place, but you know when how it's, to add value because it's not exactly necessarily about the facts. money all the time. Hey, who gonna get the drinks? Hey, who finna mm-hmm. run to the gas station to get the guards? Like it don't matter because sometimes you, that. you need that kind of person. Because again, if when you doing this thing, you don't got no team and staff behind you. You really in charge of everything. And if you can have somebody that just knows how to support, that shit mean a lot. You know what I mean? So right. some of y'all just gotta understand. Sometimes take all that shit off and just be the super, the person that's gonna support your dog on the way up. Cause you never know where the hell Matt gonna end up. Exactly. You don't know where the hell Lady Willie gonna end up. Exactly. Just support them people. You know what I mean? So, exactly. Robbie, what's more important today, clout or lyrics? I'm from the old school, so lyrics. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of people think attention. No, no, let's change. Attention is currency in our new day and age. Let's I let's not act currency. like it's not. Attention is. is a part of it. But I'm I'm from a different generation where lyrics is where it stood out. Where what you said meant a lot. So I'm going to lean towards that now. Mm. No disrespect to attention and clout because you need that because that's part of the game too. Mm. But I'm from, you know, a certain part of the life where your lyrics meant everything, your bars meant everything, your your cadence and your rhythm meant what it was, you know, to be an artist, you know. So, yeah. I respect that one because there was a time we were working together, and I'm not a lyricist, but I am a, a personality or whatever you want to call it. And there was a time where I was getting pressure on to do outlandish things and I came to him and I was like bro I don't feel comfortable mm-hmm. like doing stupid things like you know I I just want to be me I understand that if I do this it's gonna get clicks and this and that mm-hmm. and he, he paused me he's like yo you are you you're good like don't don't overthink it ignore those people because I'm not a lyricist but this is the same thing in my in my field he said, "Don't, don't. You don't have to go out and go and say f this one or f that one or you know, because I, I, I got to say that I was getting sidetracked to kind of be like the, like the, the, the academics and mm-hmm. more on drama and this and that or just doing or or, or slapping somebody. He's like, nah, like that, that's not you. So that's why I asked you that question because you know it, it, you're gonna be good as long as you're genuine. I say exactly. That be you. Be you. The world is already <laughs> taken. Just be you." Um, Matt, 
Man, I don't know. I mean, what's next for Robbie Joe? I don't know, man. The sky's the limit, and I ride with no ceiling, so I can't tell you. Um, the reason why I say that, because I got my hands in a lot of stuff. Can um, we hear something specific that's big? Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Miami tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you gave it a tip. Only fan. Okay, no, I haven't done no OnlyFans <laughs> stuff. I haven't done none of that porno world stuff. I haven't well. Would you ever do it? He was thinking about it in, in the COVID. Yeah, he was. Would you? We talked about it. <laughs> imagine, imagine you were right under. You were right under. It. He wasn't. I don't say porno, but he was. He. We had meetings in COVID. He's like, y'all do no OnlyFans is making this, that, and the other, right? Nah, this, I don't disclaimer, want, I don't want, I don't disclaimer, want, it was is it was a money move. Hey, y'all trying to figure out how to make some money. That's that's where the point yeah, was. I don't want no come on my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Squirt on my camera, no. I don't want none of that. He brought it up. He brought it up. Hey, you brought it up. You did this one too. We used to have meetings. Uh, show, and we was hot in COVID. We were still surviving in COVID, for the record. And we shot gunplay the day they closed everything down. Remember that? The first time we shot gunplay. Yes. Yeah, the first the, time. The first time, like, not, there's a whole behind-the-scenes story. Like, we were trying to look for certain things that was very expensive at that night. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah. Um, we had interview, uh, um, meetings, and probably was like, y'all do know. Only fans right now is 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 yeah, it's is, is going and I don't yes, know sir. what he was. I was like, no, no, because you got to remember, COVID was a time where the world was secluded and people were trying to figure out how to, you know, keep making money. money. You know what I mean? So there were people doing different things on OnlyFans. You know what I mean? Like not necessarily saying you have to do the adult stuff, but right. you know, people were doing other stuff because that was a mean of making your own digital money. Mm -hmm. How said. far would you go for digital money? I mean, I won't sell my soul. You know what I mean. I won't do. I won't do nothing that'll make anybody frown upon me. You know what I mean. Right. Because I have a reputation. I have a legacy to uphold. So I wouldn't do nothing for anybody to frown upon. Not saying I'm I'm a, I'm a side team to that stuff. It's if it's lucrative enough and we could do what we're doing. You sell hey, your I'm, feet, huh? You sell feet pics. What I what? Feet pics. Oh, you on that Doja Cat? You sell your feet. What I sell? Is my that's feet? You, you want to see these dogs? Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> would you if it made money? Would you do it? If somebody like it, yeah. Okay, so fees cool. Nah, man. Like for for a woman, yeah. <laughs> no, but, I'm talking about you. Listen, um, <laughs> again, getting, I, I'm getting, getting a little crazy. No, 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 no. What, no. what I'm saying is, you know, I had to, I had to realize, like with Steve Harvey, you know, as an older man, sometimes like we don't do certain things because we don't know. Right. But when you, like for instance, a male model, mm -hmm. you don't know what all they go through. But me being in profession, I'm like, nah, they have to get groomed the same way the women have to get of groomed. Of course. And it's like mm -hmm. you don't realize it because you're not in that position. Mm -hmm. But think about somebody like The Rock. Oh yeah, you gotta get your nails clean, you gotta get your hair brushed, you gotta get mm -hmm. your, sure. you gotta put sure. on makeup Watch. sometimes, you gotta do all kinds of stuff to be. Yeah. No, no, for sure, for sure. So I wouldn't be opposed to it if it was part of what we was doing, but I'm not necessarily into that stuff now. But I definitely understand with the production world, you have like like the guy, uh, I, f I don't know his name, but the character for Thor. Yo, that's Prince Helmsworth. Yeah, that dude got to go through all that kind yes. of stuff to be that person that mm -hmm. you know the world perceives him as. So yeah, you know, but um, y'all y'all wow, that's all. <laughs> he said y'all wow. Any any shout outs? Shouts out to my motherfucking dog, Lady Witty. My brother. Shouts out to my dog, Matt, over oh, here. Man. Like you know, the culture's kind of sore. This is a Appreciate beginning of a, of a lovely relationship. Um, shouts out to all of y'all who ain't make it here yet, but y'all making it y'all business to get here because this is where y'all exactly. need to be. Shouts out to all the artists okay. on they come up as grinding, trying to figure it out because you know sure. nobody else is there to help y'all keep going. Shouts out to the supporting people in the background that keep us going because mm -hmm. we are nothing without the people that's in our lives right. to keep sure. us great. Shouts out to everything that we ain't do yet that's on our bucket list that we accomplishing this year. Again, Shouts yeah. out to everybody who ain't make it to 2023. We doing this for y'all. And uh, we're going to close out with saying, hey, keep the power alive, y'all. I got one shout out too. Talk to me. I want, and I know he's humble. Shout out to his family. Um, Robbie's a off camera, very strong family man, especially them two boys. So they ain't boys no more. They boys. They still boys in my eyes. No, but no, yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. No. Listen, this is the difference. <laughs> How have, much they eating? I have sons. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so I have a 15 year old and I got 17 year old. That means Robbie Jordan stood the test of times in so many different realms. What's the food budget in your house? Oh no, nah, we at least at least seven grand a year. Of just what I got to feed them day to day. So y'all do y'all. He said it like a dog. What I gotta feed them? <laughs> no, no, no. Because again, as being as an adult, right. you have to manage your expenses. Right. So my budget, I set out at least about seven grand a year of what I'm gonna feed them. That means every week, every day, I know we have a, this budget for us to survive at the cap that we at now. So mind you, they heavy. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to make sure they're eating good. They yeah. eat out every now and then. You know, we have day to day stuff in the house, that kind of stuff. So you have to maximize your on um, your budget, and that's that's the that's the biggest thing too. You know what I mean? Just being the manager, yeah, being the um the operator. So shout out to them. Shout out to I had to I had to bring it. I no, no, for sure. Left, but that's what make me great because that's what I understand. Makes you great. I understand Facts. like it's the balance. Like not not trying to do too much, but you have to balance your personal life and your professional life and your creative life because mm-hmm. this is extra. You know what I mean? We all have regular jobs outside of this as saying ourselves and our families, but we also have what we grind on the side to do as we trying to figure out this realm. So it's having that base that I didn't understand in the beginning. Like that's what it was for, for me to understand how to manage them and everything to protect them right. to managing my heart when it comes to what I'm putting my passion yeah. into, to how to go out into the world and control all three. So, man. See, when I did open up Family Pandora's box. Yeah, for sure. You know the fucking vibes, your boy Lady Willie. We got Robbie joining the building. You. Culture Connoisseurs. It's your boy, Matt, man. We out. We out. For sure.